I had two and a half out of five about to go into round six. So round six comes up and the previous round I beat, uh, which I started off bad. I had a loss in the grandmaster. Loss, if you're just not hearing this. Number, round one, I lost to a grandmaster. Um, round two, I drew Evan Park, a uh, prodigy. You know, he still gets, you know, the height requirement for him at every amusement park, basically. So um, he was that he's that young. Prodigy, 2245, Fide's low. 22,000 for Fide, but much stronger than a rating. We got a draw and a crazy perk defense. I played the white pieces. In round three, I ended up dropping a King's Indian game because I wasn't familiar with the theory. I thought it was something else. I'm still kind of, you know, still fresh with the King's Indian to say the least. And um, so I dropped that game. Guy was about master. I was definitely mad about that game because I wasn't supposed to drop that. So now at this point, I have half out of three. So I'm going in round four like, all right, we got to turn on this lightsaber now. It's time to turn up. So I did. In round four, one, 2,000. He's 2,100 USCF. Round five comes around. I play another master. He's a strong 2,200 USCF. I think he's like 2,100 feet A. Beat him. Then we go into the next round, which is, uh, what's the guy's name? Um, Balaji, which is this round right here. Guy is feet A master, 2,370, um, 2,370 feet A, 2,400 USCF. I'm on fire right now. I mean, I'm going ham. I'm ready to go. And here is the game. You have now caught up. We in round six of the Chicago Open. So here we go. This, the, now let me get the, uh, hopefully I still got the thing here. I don't have to copy and paste it, the PGN. I think this is it. Okay, perfect. So I play the white pieces, right? You ready? You ready here? Luce is like, let's do it. You ready? Let's go. Okay, Mickey Dead Guys, what's up, bro? Elfins is here. Came just in time. That's right, Wookie, what's going on? Canty Hype. So look, this will happen. I'm playing the white pieces here, and guess what this is, John? You here? Are you here right now, John? There he go. He says, "Let's go." Look, guess what this is, John? Well, you already know. You actually said you was watching the games, so we go e4, c5. What did I play, class? What did I play here, class? Does anyone in the chat know what I would have played here? This this is a tough one. This is going to be a tough one. Ted Gambino says d3. Luminescent says C3. King F3. I like that, JW Tiger. I like that a lot. King F3. I was thinking about it. I was I was naming every move before you played it. Uh, D4, B3. Uh, here we go. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. It's C3. I play C3. Here we go. Here we go. We in a C3 Sicilian. E4, C5, C3, right? After C3, we have B6. So out of all the C3 Sicilians that I've studied, this one is the one he plays. I'm like, are you serious? B6? B6, now honestly, here's the here's my logic here. Immediately, I'm already thinking in this kind of position, well, at least it's not that bad. It's not one of the main lines, sharp this, blah, 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 theory, 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 all the way down, you know, which I'm prepped for, but it's not that. So at least I'm feeling good about that. But I'm also like, B6, man, B6, this one I don't study that much. I study it, but I don't study it that much. So it is what it is. We go into B6. They always play the one you haven't studied, right? Yes, yes. It's always that. It's always that. Like this tournament, I got two perks. I was, I mean, I, luckily, I studied the perk a long time ago. So I know the perk very well. But I was like, perks? Really? No E5? Like no that one C5, one Sicilian? I mean, we're two, but it was like, wow. Okay. You get all the weird stuff all the time. Dude, you need a C3 email pronto. You're right, Joe Broin. You're right. You're right. I hope y'all put that. AB, did you put that in the chat, man? I mean, in the Discord? Hopefully, you put that in the Discord or someone. Put that in the email section of the Discord so I can remember to get down to that. Thanks, AB. Thanks. Okay, so B6 was played. I played D4. Just keep it going. D4, regular stuff. He plays bishop b7. You need to stay consistent. I tell my students this too. If you're going to play b6, don't play h6 right after. It's just not consistent. So bishop b7, easy stuff. He's playing. He's hitting e4. So I play bishop d3. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever played against the Owens defense, any e4 players. The Owens defense is like b6 and e6, and they go bishop here and all that other stuff. It gets annoying because they attack this center really hard, and they play in like d5. A knight of six. The object, the object of these kind of openings with these sideline stuff is that they're trying to hit the center. They're trying to attack the center hard. So you're going to see maybe even f5, e5, d5. Something is coming to break up the center. So that's the job for black, right? 
So my job is to try to hold it and see what we can do from there. So I know he's coming at me. Knight of six was played. Usually you'll see queen e2 is like one of the main moves or something. And then if you play queen e2, you might have something like d5. Luckily, I think his knight's trapped because I have f3. But this stuff's going to get annoying. It's not going to be, you know, what I wanted here. But I found, and actually I have a game against Simon Williams, the ginger GM. You can look it up. Where I played this same kind of system with f3. And 92, and I ended up beating them. I was like, wow. Like, I found this system a while ago. It's just about, you always play F3 so you can kind of stop this bishop from being so strong. And then I play 92, put the knight on G3. And when that happens, it frees up this pawn to play F4. And I get a quick F5 in to attack him quickly. While this knight's defending E4 and the bishop defending it. So I can attack really quickly, especially when I castle. The rook is able to rook lift really quickly. The stuff gets ridiculous real fast and that's what happened in this game so you know especially c3 was rooting for you chicago teammates at the chicago open when they played that's right just to play simon Aunt williams would be a dream for me actually i was my fingers was kind of shaking i was actually playing on the phone too which is i was like out and i was playing blitz on the phone and it was simon williams and i was like oh snap everybody don't talk to me don't breathe or nothing like i gotta play simon williams right now so i played him gave him my best game and it, and we played white like this and we had this kind of thing so that's what happened so i played f3 i stopped everything shut it down shut down this diagonal so after f3 pawn takes pawn takes he played knight to c6 knight to c6 is hitting this but in the back of my mind as all e4 players should know this is a very difficult kind of not difficult but you have to make a decision quickly how it's only like the fifth move or so but why because you have to realize is this bishop going to be are you going to keep this bishop or are you not because knight before is coming. Knight before is definitely coming. He's going to take this in these cases a lot. So I knew that was coming. Especially with these French or sideline kind of things. You want to get rid of this bishop as quickly as possible. Because it's a huge attacking piece. Especially if I get e5 in. I'm coming at him. It's a wrap, big fella. It's just it's about to be an attack. You know this all the time. So knight before has to be played. And lo and behold, that's exactly what ended up happening. Because I know he's going to push one of these pawns. So I don't know which one yet. So I'm just ready to castle. So I got out the way. 92. 92. Boo Dog with the eight months. Thanks so much for the sub, bro. Welcome to the stream. Catching this out. This is round six right now. Round six, I'm playing Balaji. He's a Fide Master. Very strong. 2400 USCF. 2370 Fide. Very strong youngster. So we have 92. After that, he plays E5. E5. Very strong move here. So it makes... Uh, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Just do it, please, with the follow. E5. After e5, I played d5, hitting this, hitting this knight, and now look at this, locking this down, locking this down. So now this bishop is extremely bad. At this point, I'm already feeling good with the white pieces in a c3 Sicilian because I know my plan's easy, castle and f4. Only issue I am going to have is how good is this dark square bishop going to be, but my king can always run in the corner on h1. So I had this, I had this in mind, by the way, not to mention... Let's make his next move. He played knight before. Now, here, in this position, do I keep the bishop or do I not keep the bishop? This is a question to you right now in the chat. Do I keep the bishop or do I not keep the bishop? Keep it, says incoming. Dead bishop, says loser. The bishop looks so bad to me. Don't keep it. We have keep it. No, don't. Drop it. Give it up. Give it up. John Davis says, get rid of it. John Davis in the building. The man himself. JT with the raid. What's up, Japanese tutor? Let's go. Not at all. All pawns on light. It's horrendous. That's correct. Get rid of it. Castle and let him take it. How do you get better at tactics? You get better at tactics by doing them. That's how you like, get better and learning from them. JT in the building. What's up, bro? This is actually for the YouTube. So that's why um, there's no music as we do this. This, this is just for the YouTube. Oh, it's the dude. I love this dude. What's up, bro? <laughs> What's going on, dude? I'm the dude. That's what's up. We in here. Let's go. This is, uh, I'm chilling. Thanks, man. I hope you had a great stream. Thanks for the raid, bro. Appreciate the love. That's what's really up. That's what's really up here. But we on this, this is round six, by the way. First off, welcome to the stream. This is Chicago Open round six. Chicago Open round six. And um, now I'm already, uh, I'm on a two-game win streak right now. So I'm on fire. I'm playing with the white pieces here. I'm playing with the C3 Sicilian. This is the book right here. You need to go get it if you want to play the C3 Sicilian. It's right under the video right now. But back to that. Now, um, with that being said, 
I'm playing a C3 Sicilian against this man. He's 2370. Very strong. He's a Fide master, right? I get into this position. Very nice. I'm feeling good here. And the question is, do I keep the bishop? And everyone in the chat that was like, you don't keep the bishop. You are correct. This was my plan from the jump. No problem. Thank you for going over your games. Quality as always. Thanks, JT. Appreciate it. The, this is correct. They, they always have a thing saying like, how do you know you have a bad bishop? Well, that's pretty simple. You just see where your pawns are. What color are they on? So if they're all on white like this, this bishop's bad anyway. So me trying to keep it for what? It wouldn't do anything anyway. Now here's an advanced level of thinking. After I got the bishop here, I realized, well, I know if I start to open the game up more, what's going to be good? His bishops. So I need to try to keep the game closed, but open just enough for me to attack him. Because if he gets the stuff out, his bishops are going to be nice. Reassess your chest, fourth edition. That's under video as well. It also text, it all, it talks about like, you know, knowing, play the position based off the pieces you have. So if you got bishops, you want to open the game. If you got knights and everything else, then you have to, you know, play it here and there. You got to be correct. You have to, you have to be accurate with it. Bishop b5, deny that knight of purpose. He's going to be close to trap. Right, but bishop b5 immediately, I mean, you can just play a6, counterplay. It's called an equal or stronger threat. Counterplay, which would be crazy. Zaza, thank you so much for the follow. So what I did, I got out of the way. I'm ready to attack him now. I castled. He takes, oh, he plays check first, actually. Bishop c5 check, because it's a development move. I had to be ready for this. I knew it was coming. So I got out of the way. King h1. Now my king's extra safe over here. Only thing I was worried about in some cases is if he tried like knight h5 and queen here real fast and he's trying to mate me. But I was able to get out of this with just some small f3, I mean f4s or like knight c3, knight a4. And I'm able to get rid of this bishop because that's the main piece that's doing that kind of stuff. So he took the bishop. He chopped it because he kind of had to. He's been out here. It's time to go. So I take with the queen. I develop another piece. I'm out. Now at this point, I think he realizes or he knows that this is going to be a move eventually. I'm doing very well with the black with the white pieces here. I was thinking a5 was going to be a thing, but in some cases I was just going to block with my knight and play a4. So if he plays something like a5, knight c3, bishop a6, knight here, and then play a4, or try to play a4 and keep this as close as I can, because he it's hard for him to even hit this too. It's very hard. It's a it's a very interesting position to say the least. So queen takes. He played castles. He got out the way. Luminescent gifted the sub to Japanese Tutor. That's six gifted subs from Luminescent. Thank you so much. Appreciate the love. That's what's up. We in here. Let's go. Knight C3 actually was my move because I just I needed to develop. I always like to say like I got to do this anyway and I might as well do it right now while I have time. I was not like, oh, let's try to find the winning move right now. Your winning move comes when you have more pieces out. So I'm like, let me just get this piece out of the way. So Knight C3, I'm gone. Then he plays 98. Now at this point, and this is the moment where he realized he messed up. Basically, in a way, this is where I realized that he messed up. I remember back in Millionaire Chess, the year I won $20,000. That was 2014. This was round five or four or something. I don't remember what round it was. Maybe it was six. Round six, but I won this game. And I was playing white. I was playing white. I was playing the Grand Prix against Agassi Innitz. He's like 2,300. And he put his knight on E8. Every time I see this, a lot, not every time, it depends on the position, but this is not good. I knew that this was going to be bad for him, especially the rooks he's not even developed. Only thing he got out is his bishop. Everything else is undeveloped. This bishop, this rook is looking crazy. Heat Miser with the 10 months. What's up, bro? Thanks for the sub. So look, looking at this, this bishop's bad. This knight's bad. These rooks are disconnected. The queen's still on the back rank. I was like, okay, you about to... Like, hey, Bigfoot, don't jump off the deep end. Not right now. It looks like it's about to happen really quickly. Especially, I'm one way, one move away from completing development with Bishop D2. Really, even though I probably wouldn't just do this because it's just Bishop D2. But it's just saying that I am one move away from completing development, which is uh, nice. So, after 98, I immediately like, well, because you're going away from the center, it's time to break. It's time to do something now. F4. So now I'm about to like rook lift or maybe try to get this knight to f5 as quickly as possible because his bishop is not able to cover it. So I'm going to have some issues or he's going to have some issues. They always say, what is it called? Um, uh, a knight on f4 or a knight on f5 wins games. I forgot where that quote was, but I've seen it. 
and is correct. I mean, think about how many times you've won a game with a knight on f5 or f4. So you, I knew that this was a, a very big thing for me. f4 was a, good, a, a great push. I also have bishop takes f4. It's some good stuff. So after this, we have pawn takes. So what do you take with the knight or the bishop here? What do you take with? You playing with the white pieces. Pawn takes f4. White to move. What do you do? Rook says I pawn. Okay. Bish, bishy. Kasparov said that. You must have read that from great predecessors. Ah, mm, I do actually have that book sitting right over there. Yes, I do. That's probably, that's exactly where I got it from there. Bishop, bishop, ma, I might have played f6, okay, knight, connect the rooks, bishop develops a piece and allows knight, bishop, 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 yes, yes, bishop, so knight can go to g3, evil apples, you guys are correct, you're thinking correctly, at first I was like, you know what, I could take with the knight and be tricky and blah, 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 when sometimes you just gotta be simple, just shut up and stop talking about all the, the extra stuff, trying to be, you know, cute, Basically, trying to be real. Oh, that was so sweet. Just take and just develop. Because later on, you might need this bishop. So you need to get it out. So I took with the bishop. Bishop takes f4. Capture and develop at the same time. Correct. I like the rook. Yeah, rook takes. And I, I thought about those, but I'm like, you know what? Just just develop this bishop. Just develop it. And, and, and hope for the best. That's exactly what happened. So he played d6. At this point, I'm like, okay, this is a great position for white. This is a very, very good position. So I followed up with the plan. I played knight g3. So if he doesn't pay attention, I have knight f5 and queen g3 swinging over. So he played bishop c8. Stopping this, he's going to chomp this as fast as it gets there. So we're not playing knight f5. So now, what do you think I play here is white? I bet white is plus two here at least. It's very close. And the bishop connects to rooks too, correct? What do you play here is white now? What do you do? We have rook f3. He's like aggressive right now. Smash this man. I don't care what you're talking about. Rook f3, mate in seven. E5. We have an e5. Queen f3 from ab. Okay. Queen f3. Queen f3, knight h5, e5. What is the knight on e8 doing? What's the plan? Exactly. It's no plan for that knight. A3, rook a to e1. Why don't you attack his dark bishop? Why didn't you? Oh, that's coming. That's coming. E5, A3. With the knight, knight A4, it's not. I don't need to. I don't need to. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for mate. This bishop's already bad enough. It's just kind of hitting air. That's what I like to say. It's hitting air. So it's not doing much. With the move, you guys are all missing it. I played knight C to E2. It was just a planned move. All these moves could have been played too. Thank you so much for the follow. Micha Bodnik, thanks for the follow. I played knight E2. My intention is to go to f5. I'm trying to get to f5. And if I get rid of this bishop, then I have a dark... Like, his pieces are just bad. So looking at this in an in-game sense, I already have the rook. I have this file here. If he takes this, I'm just doing quite well. I followed you, but no shout out. Oh, really? I'm sorry. I pawned my chest set. That's a great name, by the way. <laughs> Funny, but thank you. Thanks for the follow. Welcome to the stream. So knight to d4 is actually my thing. And then knight f5, actually. All good. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Simon, you know what? I don't know. I don't know, but hey, I won. I won. So that's all that matters. Thanks. Good to be here. Thank you. Knight d4. So knight c to, uh, to e2. Knight c7 is what he played. And at this point, I'm like, where's the knight going? But he's not doing a knight. He's actually looking at bishop a6. So this is, I thought a while here. I thought a while because I was like, he's always going to probably have bishop a6. But if the bishop goes to this side of the board, that means that he won't be able to be on this side of the board. So a quick or swift bishop a6 hitting his long diagonal. I can play queen f3, knight f5 is coming, queen g4. I'm feeling good. He can have that whole thing. I was even like, do I even sack the exchange here? Here's Balaji right here. This is actually Balaji in the chat right now. This is the game. This is round six right here. We're talking about the game right now, Balaji. He says, I recognize this game. <laughs> Welcome, Balaji. What's up, bro? We're going over to round six right now, and then we're going over round seven. So, Balaji, the player of this game with the black pieces, the Fide Master, the young phenom, he's here right now. Andres Davis, what's up, man? What's up, Balaji? Hey, man, shout out to Balaji in the chat, okay? Shout out to Balaji in the chat. So, we're going over this right now. So, I know his intention here was like Bishop A6. Bishop A6 trying to hit this over here. Were you in him um, at the time? I am. You said you, you 2014. I was. I was a 2000. Uh, I've been a national master since 2007. 
actually. So it's really time to be um, next level. And that's why I'm, it's, it's time to get it now. It's time to get it, bro. So Bishop A6, he was definitely, I, I figured this was a thing. But I always, like I was saying, this side of the board is, is going to be left away from the bishop. Away from the, hey there, Canty, what's going on? So and somebody just followed too. Thanks for the follows. Killer Strat and DTH. Thanks for the follows. Um, but queen f3, you know, I was able to, to do that kind of thing if this happened. So um, rook f to b1 was actually the move I play here. Luminescent and gifted a sub to Balaji. I always wanted to play it. I always wanted to have bishop a6 available. That's what he said. But it's good to have Balaji actually in the chat so he can tell us about some of his thoughts. He's in the chat right now. So, you know, ask him. But not, maybe not ask him, but ask me because I, I can say it faster here, right? But Balaji, I bet you really did well guessing what can't he play it. Yeah, this was tough. Rook F to B1, actually. And I was going to ask you guys, but I moved too fast already. So Rook F to B1 was the move I made here. Now, guys, what is the intention here? Rook to F to B1. Can anyone in the chat tell me? What is this intention? I had so many other moves to make that I could have made. But I played Rook F to B1. Because I could have put... I mean, look at look at how awkward this is, honestly. The other Rook could have went to B1, right? Other Rook could have went to B1. But because of this diagonal... As he said, he wanted to keep this available. I move this rook just in case. And it also puts a threat on the board. And it gives me kind of a tempo in a way. So it gives me an extra move. So now I can move away. I was more worried about queen c3 and queen b2, says Balaji. He didn't even care about this. He was like, oh, I'm, I was more worried about queen c3, queen d2. I was never into that. I was never into that anyway, honestly. Queen c3 I was never a fan of. And queen d2 I was, though. Queen d2 I was a fan of. But not queen c3. I just never was into it. B4 is the thing, though. Yes, guys. B4 is exactly what I'm going for here. Divergence. Thanks for the follow. So, trap, trap the bishop. Correct. B4. It also, you know, it gave me a tempo. So, he plays A5. He plays A5. Stops it immediately. Excuse me. Now, I continue my plan. If the queen, if, it, wait, what does he say? Balaji says, queen gets out of the diagonal because of B4. And also, the rook is good on the F file. That's correct. That's correct. And I realized, like, this rook is probably better here on the F file. So this was just more of a clever move than it was anything else. John Davis with the $30 tip, bro. Thank you so much, man. That pays for the entry fee for the 21st. So the entry fee is paid because of John and a few others. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you. We in here right now. John Davis with $30. Appreciate the love. Seems strange, though, blocking your rook in... Oh, yeah, but yeah, it was strange, but I did this all for a tempo and also always always staying out of the line of fire of this tempo. That's the only thing. That's the only thing I did. John Davis is in the chat, by the way, man. Put some hype in the chat for the generous donation, John Davis. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Appreciate that a lot. It says a lot, man. Thank you, John Davis. New follower. Thank you, Tab and Fur. Are we in here? Yes, sir. Are we in here, Z Nation. You know that. You know that. You already know. So Rook F to B1, he plays A5. He stops B4. That's right. Put my John Davis emails up. I see you, AB. I caught those. There go mine, too. We in here. You told me to put some hype in the chat. <laughs> nice. Nice. Quinn Tanksley. What's up, Quinn? Yo, what's up, Canty? What's up, Quentin? What up, bro? Thanks for the sub. But I wanted to put... Uh, Balaji's in the chat. He says, I wanted to play A5 either way because even if I move my knight, then I can play Bishop A6. Right. Yeah, and I knew that. I knew that anyway, because I was like, he can always play bishop a6 anyway kind of thing. So let's see what happens. So after this, rook f to b1, I play knight d4. I continue to plan. Queen f6, I knew this was coming. And then I went right in. So cool to have Canty and Balaji in here to hear both perspectives. I know, right? Like, I'm sitting here analyzing the game of the monster that I played. And the monster is in the chat right now. He's in the chat. Queen f6, right? So queen f6, knight d to f5. So I played knight d to f5. Now, this got critical. This was the critical. I was I, honestly, guys, I was feeling like tower right here. I was like, if you look the wrong way, Balaji, if you breathe the wrong way right now, Balaji, if you lift your pin the wrong way to write the notation, this is going to be over. That's what I was trying to do here. But it was crazy because there was some lines that was like, this does not work. It was like, whoa, man, I was like, man. Balaji's good. And then all of a sudden, I was like, did I mess up? At one point, I was thinking, like, did I just mess this up? Is Balaji just a super GM that nobody knows about? Like, I didn't even understand. So, um, because um, after I looked deeper, you know how, how Stockfish and every engine, like, gives you the death? Oh, the death, 16, 20. And then they, you know, the evaluation's super high. And then it, like, levels out. 
then it levels out and then they're like oh okay yeah it was minus five but now it's more like plus 0.9 after it levels out so that's how i fell here i was like oh yeah knight D i'm winning i didn't even have to think about this knight d to f5 i'm winning and then i had to think for like 40 minutes after he made the next move good night dude i need sleep i'll be scheduling my pre tourney lesson here soon all right d price let me know bro let me know you got the schedule let's go i will be scared of g6 after knight f5 says salty clown minus five to plus point now without <laughs> thought a move being made whoa you played balaji i did bro balaji you're a beast yeah i know i know he's a young beast quiet too well, quiet and he like super tall i'm like bro your shoe size is like 16 and you're not even 16 probably like so it looks like that but he's a he's a, a big kid tall tall phenom here good night hip side yeah good night d price peace out bro so he plays what g6 this is the testing move now i ask you chat right here put your glasses on i'm 14 ridiculous balaji 14 his shoe size probably the same like i was like bro those they man like those was uh, he had on some some basket i think they was a bronze or something they had on some 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 sneakers and i was like i don't know this boy is he got some big feet like he tall that was funny. A thousand bits from D Price. Thanks, bro. Appreciate the love, my dude. Appreciate you. Yeah, I looked at G6 by G5. Thanks for the bits, man. Thank you. Share rewards to 25 others in the chat. Wow, that's sweet. I didn't even know you could do that, D Price. I see somebody else do that. AB did that. There was one more move I took time for. There was one move I took time for. What, what move was that, Balaji? What move was that? Your feet bigger than mine. I'm 16. <laughs> uh, not knight h4. That loses a piece. Yeah, knight h4 is not a move. It wasn't sure whether you could still play knight h5. Yes, Balaji. Yes, I was looking at that. I like bishop d6. Knight h6, king h8, rook f1. Okay. Okay. Anyone else in here? What does white play here? What does white play? I was feeling like Tao. I really was. I was like, I got to do something. Something has to be here. So I went into the think tank. For a long time, I felt like Sockfish. I felt like, you know, a computer. I had to look at every single move and every single line. So it took me, I don't know, like 40 minutes, it felt like, to sit here and figure out this next move. Because I had to make sure everything was precise. Because if one move is off, <laughs> GG, big fella, you can send the stretcher. It's over. So, Aaron Hawaii, thanks for the 10 bits, bro. Let's go. Let's go. Patroculus 513. Night H5 from John Davis. I knew you would say that. I knew John Davis. <laughs> We looked at a few John Davis games, and we like, man, why you out here sandbagging John Davis? Stop doing that to them. Why you got to do that? I played bad this tournament, though. Yeah. It happens, Balaji. Of course, it does happen sometimes. Like, it, it really happens to everyone. You have that time. But at the end of the day, you know you're still a super strong player, monster, and scary person under the bed. Watch out for Balaji every single time. I hope I play the World Open. Me too, man. I'm actually going. What's the time increment for this tournament? I want a rematch. <laughs> Let's go. What's the time increment for the tournament? This is uh, two hours. Two hours per side. Ten second delay. And two hours and 40. 40 moves. 40 moves in another 30 minutes after that. So like five hour game. Six hour. So here's what I thought. I did not play Knight H5. And I don't think Knight H5 works. Here's what happened, guys. Knight H5. If I play Knight H5 right here. And this is what I thought the longest on because sometimes you, it looks so beautiful that you try to force it to work. And that's what I was looking at so long. That's what took me like 30 minutes at the time. The other 10 minutes is like, so, oh, okay, check this out. That's simple. But the, the bulk of the time was this move right here. He has one line to get out of everything. One line. And I was, and I mean, to me, and actually I think I looked in the engine and Night H5 was not, it was not good. You have a better record against me than Gotham? I swindled Gotham in November from a mate and I to a draw. Wow. Wow. Gotham, I know he remembers it. I still want to play Night H5, but we can play Night H6 first. Well, you're, are you FM or NM, Balaji? Yeah, Balaji's FM, straight, bona fide. So, Night H5 here, guys. I was looking at everything, guys. Everything. Queen H8? Man, I was really hoping for something like this, right? I mean, it just wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen, but knight e7 or knight h6 was made. So I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, kind of get one of those in. But that just would never happen unless he was just like, you know, I'm going to do this just for everyone can see. So, you know, thanks. You're welcome, Canty. Queen h8 kind of thing. You know, that doesn't happen. But, um, and, and, and then also, like, there's no other move, honestly, besides queen d8 and queen h8. 
I think there's no other queen move, right? So queen a queen here. What was the move here? I don't even remember. Is it check and king here? I think he was in trouble. I don't know. I don't even remember what this was actually was. It could be check king here and maybe queen c3, but then there's f6. Can't remember what queen d8 was about. Queen queen h8 mouse slip could really actually happen to me. <laughs> Probably a lot of ways. I'm not sure what to do. Maybe, I mean, right, like you said, a lot of ways. Queen g3 could be a thing. Maybe uh, queen g3 to play bishop g5 kind of thing. I can maybe even play bishop h6. There's a lot of stuff. Queen c3 right now. I don't know, right? But queen d8, that's not the move. The, the critical line here is actually taking the knight. That's the thing that you really need to calculate the most. So this is what took the longest. Pawn takes knight. What do you start with here? What do you start with? You attack in this king, how do you do it? You just take the knight, right? You just take the knight, Balaji. Now, this attack looks super strong. I mean, like, I'm like, this is out. Knight h5, man, I'm, I'm a, come on. Next game, like, but it's not that simple. It is not that simple. We have e5, we have queen g3. e5, I thought for a long time too. Well, not really, because this queen takes f5, so it doesn't work. Bishop h6, and eh, bishop h6. How about bishop takes f5, x glam. Bishop takes f5, x glam. Big fella. Big fella. Because the queen covers the square. You got to remember that. The queen covers the mate. So that's you got to be careful with that queen. John Davis is close. Queen g3, queen g6, 97. Oh, but queen g3, king h8, and there's nothing. There we go. John Davis is on it. I'm telling John Davis is stronger than what you think. Honestly, he really is much stronger than what you think. He's definitely seeing. That is correct. Queen g3 check, right? Knight a6 follow up with rook f1. I was thinking that too, but I was like, if it's too slow, if I'm sl if, if it's too slow, it's a wrap. So, of course, queen g6, 97. That's obvious. There's more to it than af that, af that after king h8, he says. Right. Now, after king h8, there's, like he says, there's more to it. So, I thought I could play bishop g5 right now, right? Watch this. Bishop g5. This is really strong stuff, guys. Bishop g5. First off, first off, where does the queen go? Somebody give me a queen move, please. Somebody give me a queen move. This was good stuff. I actually already annotated this game. Really, Balaji? Really? Let me see them notes, man. Or something like that. That'd be nice. Queen g6, of course. Right. Queen g6. Queen e5 from John Davis. Perfect. That's what I was looking for. I wanted someone to please say just queen e5 or queen d4. Thank you. Thank you. So, queen e5, queen takes, pawn takes, check here, and then mate on h6. That is so cool to see a mate on h6 like that. That was one way, of course, right? Then I think queen d4. Queen d4, I think e5. Oh, yeah, I just take it. I just take the queen. All right, so queen e5 will be a blunder. So, the, the critical thing is actually actually uh, queen g6 because that's the only other move. Queen g6. Okay, got to go. All right, Balaji, thank you so much. What a great game. And what an uh, honor it was to playing such a strong player, Balaji. So great, great, uh, great time. And um, good luck to you in your next tournament, bro. Hope to see you at the World Open. See you later, Balaji. Peace out, man. This is who I played, and he's dipping out now. Have a good night, bro. Peace. Peace out. So Queen G6, right? After Queen G6. Oh, now after this Queen G6, what do you do? Bishop F6 check? You just jumped off the deep end, big fella? I hope it's nice on the way down. Queen takes F F F6, and it's just a wrap. Queen G7, then you can't do nothing about that. So, I mean, you can, like you can't even go Queen G7. So, 97. Yeah, 97. Okay, now I got to go Queen G7. Now what? Now what do you do? Now what do you do? Because at this point, you like lost if you don't find a move. If you don't find a move. I looked at all of this. I looked at all of this, and I'm like, okay, this is, the, this is where we're going to be at this point. Now what do you do? Rook F1. Right, Queen H4, you fail. Queen H... Queen h4 is f6 on the move, so you in trouble. Queen f4, f6, ab, that's just gg. Or maybe f6, bishop h6 is what you're saying? Queen here, f6, bishop h6? Oh, no, he could take on e7, though, and then he takes the rook. So it's too much material I'm giving up. I'm giving up too much. I'm already down a piece, too. You got to know, he took a piece. He took a piece. So at the end, if I, oh, I get this, I get this and that. Oh, that might be cool. You know, was rook f1 first stronger than 97? I actually thought that, too. After queen g6, I was like, how about, but here's the thing, John. I was like, I don't think this is enough. It needs to be forcing right now, or it needs to be the best. Because if rook f1, f6, I might be I might be just lost now. I Because I can't move the bishop. 
Queen c3, he gonna take here. He can also maybe just even snap this in some cases because I am still down a piece right now. I sat the piece for nothing. I played knight h5 and he just took it. Plus three already. So if I'm not exact, if I'm not sharp, it's a wrap. It's a wrap because, I mean, he's going to be up a piece in the end of every line unless it's like mate or I'm getting the piece back and some. So bishop g5, he played queen g6. Oh, no, he did. This is not the game. But queen g6, knight e7, queen g7. So what do we do next? What do we do next? Yeah, my USCF went up, 2310. That's right. What do we do next? Temporary advantage of rook disconnection. Temporary, very temporary. Rook f1 for sure. That's right. That's right, John. Rook f1. Bishop f6. Nah, you know what? Bishop f6 looks cool until after he makes the move and then you like, you know that face you make after like, oh, snap, dang. Oh, he can do that. Then you start thinking, well, shoot, queen, do move like that, right? Well, shoot. What? Hold up. It's one of those. It looked good, but it's not. Oh, I've been there, right? Too familiar feeling. Bishop F6 don't work. I always say that. Yeah, I thought he was... You try to explain what just happened. I thought he was like, well, well if he would have did, it's not. It's over. It's to start... Reset him. Reset him. Start a new one. Save everybody some time here. Money Micah, thanks so much for the follow. It's over. So, Bishop F6 is one of those moves. So, Rook F1 is the only logical move here. Rook F1. Threatening Bishop F6. How does he stop the threat? He actually has two ways. Bishop d4 and f6. And I think I think this way is what deterred me from this whole thing. From this whole thing. f6, that's, that was something I actually considered. I was like, I might go into the f6 line. But this bishop here, this bishop here, I think, was the only thing stopping everything. Because after he goes bishop here, where do you go now as white? What move do you make now? What move do you make? Chess comment? I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that chess comment. You're right. Queen takes d6. Bishop d4. Queen takes d6. And then, well, okay, I'll take this. I'm still down. I'm still down. Okay. He takes here, maybe? Okay. What's the, what's the piece count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm still down a piece. It looks good. It looks good. But I am still down a piece right now. So... You know, and, you know, mind you, you have to see all of this, all of this over the board before it happens. So I need to make sure I'm accurate and recheck it and triple check it and 20 time check it to make sure that I didn't miss a, oh, A4. <laughs> and then you'd be like, wow, all that thinking, all that time, all of this, I could have just did this, blah, blah, blah. Why don't I just jump off the deep end? It's it's over. How does everyone go about learning the square so well? It took me a sec to... Look at the great markings. Uh, it takes time. It's time and experience. That's all it is. Just like anything. Take time and experience. Hardest part for me, says John Davis. Yeah, this is the toughest part. This is the toughest. I mean, honestly, I've been playing overboard chess for 18 years. I'm 26. So basically, all my life, I've been playing overboard chess. So, you know, it's, it becomes it becomes very easy at that point. But Bishop D4 would have stopped everything. And I can't play Bishop F6 and that's GG. Good game. That's over. So F6, though. I was like, oh, F6. But I even tell my students this. Don't play hope chess. You want to hope that he plays F6 and hope that this Fide master that's so strong is going to miss this move. And then I'm just lost at this point. So, But it's just fun to look at because after F6, um, you can do bishop takes F6. And then um, queen can't take. So after rook takes F6, rook takes F6. So if he takes here, then I got mate on G8. But all he could do is this. And this is the last move that I looked at. And this was too uncomfortable and kind of too unclear, to say the least. I was like, I'm down a piece, but what's my real compensation here? I have the exchange and maybe a pass pawn. And I'm like, I don't think this is enough to win. I can't even go rook f1. If I could double the rooks, it might be considered. But I can't even double them because bishop a6 was strong. And he covered the back rank. I might be in trouble. I might be in trouble. So I have to be careful. I have to be very, very careful here. So I back it up. I didn't go into this line. I did not go into knight h5 because of this. And I was sitting here so long trying to figure out knight h5. Not as clear as I thought. Correct, chess comment. Not as clear, but I had to see that. I sat there and found all those moves. And I was like, okay. Knight. And then you get that sigh after 40 minutes of thinking. you like, <sighs> and you're like, it don't work. It doesn't work. It looks so nice. And you, you have to part ways with that move. So you have to go. 95 looks so nice. It looks so great.
but it just don't work. How did you see that? Like people say in your mind's eye, but I can see a couple moves. How does, wait, but does it take time or is it a special gift? How do you suggest learning how to visualize? You know, chess.com actually has a vision drill. So they like H1, you click on H1 as fast as you can. That's a good way to do it. Also try to read a book, a chess book. You know, I can read, by the way, hold up, more marketing. See through Cecilia, this is the best book of my life ever in life. Make sure you get it right under the video. And uh, this is how I play the C3 Sicilian. Help me win this game, actually, too. But um, you try to read a book, like, without the board. That'll help you a lot. Try to read a book without the board. But it's, it's practice. It really is. It's definitely practice. I thought you had Rook F8, Queen takes G3, but King G7. There you go, Evan. Look. Hey, I'm telling you, Jedi see it all. Back in the position, why isn't King F5 good attacks? Bishop and the queen. Just nine to five. Good. It attacks the bishop and the queen. I'm trying to see where that's at. Bishop and the queen. Hmm. Don't remember that position. Because they go like six to eight moves out of the diagram. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So knight f five. Here we are. This is right. G six. So instead of instead of knight h five, what else do I play? We still stuck here. What else do I play, guys? White to move. I didn't go knight h5. So now I have to find another move to make. We have e5. Okay. Here's the here's the problem with e5. He can just take this piece first. I'll even show you. E5 is just a straight up blunder. E5 looks good until BAM! Bishop takes f5. And then he like turns sideways as he makes the move and hits the clock. And don't even look at the board no more. Just get up and walk away. Bishop takes f5. You can resign. Pawn takes queen, and then I take a queen too. But I took a piece before you did. So that's that's a wrap. That's a wrap. That will hurt. Knight h6, knight h6, knight h6. Correct. Knight h6 is the move I made. Now I had to sit here for a long time because he has a sequence of moves, which I knew he would find it. He found the best moves to make. He found every move. And I was like, if he if he messes up, then we'll have this position. I have all the mess up positions, but I'm like, well, what's the best play? And I found it, and he found it, of course. And then he blundered. He blundered in a position that didn't look like a blunder, but it was a blunder. It didn't look like it could be a blunder, but it was. And I found it, and I ended up winning. So let me show you what happened. I played knight h6 check, king h8. Now in king g7, king g7 lines, I was looking at all kind of stuff. Like, I mean, well, bishop d2 is just winning, so that's nice. So... But he played king h8. So after knight h6, he goes, where are we at? King h8. Okay. So after king h8, where do you go as white? White to move, king h8. There's so many moves to make. It looks like so much play here. I wish my rook was on the f file, but this bishop kind of scared me away. Rook f1, but you still, you, you would be giving up an exchange, which that probably could be a thing. But if you are not accurate, and, you know, it, it takes a lot with that. You have to be confident. Too slow, rook f1. Correct. It's just too slow. If it was, like, winning next, I'd be fine. Zane says bishop d2. Steve Meister says c3, meaning the queen, I'm assuming. Queen c3. Just curious on your opinion on their quality versus Lee Chess. Um, well, Chess.com been around for a very long time. Lee Chess is a great site, too, of course. Honestly, every chess site I've been on has been a great chess site. Everyone. There's so many out there, but I've been with Chess.com since I can remember, and it's just been a great site. You know, ICC was first, and then and just bounced around on everything. H6, Bishop G5, E5. I play Bishop D2, guys. Here it is. Bishop d2, just to get this diagonal going. Just to get it going. Now he has a choice to make. Do I play bishop here, which is going to be a blunder after rook here, and it's just problems. He can't defend everything because f7 too. And then queen g7. Now, check this out. I missed. I missed right here. I had a friend of mine that was like, hey, bro, you missed this. I couldn't figure it out. I didn't even know. But knight takes f7 was like plus something. I was supposed to do this. I didn't see this over the board. I did not see this. This was another level, I think. 
because I was like, I didn't see Knight take, I didn't even consider Knight takes F7. This was the move that I missed where I was just winning. I was like, wow, Knight takes F7 is really strong. So I didn't play Knight takes F7. Instead, I went with an alternative line, which takes much longer. What do you play as white here? He says, why is knight takes seven, f7 good? So knight takes, check this out. If rook takes, then we have bishop c3. That's pretty simple. Then rook f6, and then I think it was rook f1, and then knight to e8, rook takes, knight takes, and then bring the rook back over to f1. So you have this kind of thing. That's that line. But then the other one, um, queen takes, I am, shoot, honestly, like I don't remember, but I know he said, I think he said rook f1. Rook f1 was just winning here besides with it but i'm like how like it's not that easy still queen e7 like i mean it's, it's simple but it's not simple like how do we i don't know takes and bring the rook over to f1 i, I don't know like the engine was like knight f7 i'm like all right cool but calculating that right and being accurate accurate that was uh i didn't consider it i didn't consider it so instead of that i played queen f3 queen f3 why because I know that he's going to try to trap this knight. My knight has no squares to go to. It has no squares. I also want to kind of bully this. I want to be here, but I don't want to be, you know, skewered right here. So I'll play queen f3 just so I can put some pressure here and bring my knight back to g4. He's probably going to bring his bishop around. If he does bring the bishop around, I'm able to bring the rook here to put pressure here. If he takes this, I can play rook b1 or even c1 in some cases to take this knight. The b1 bishop is hit or uh the rook is is here so i'm able to hit on b6 as well to take my pawn back just in case he won a pawn for me in this case with the bishop here and uh, i'm just calling the shots once the knight gets to g4 i get rid of this bishop and i'm feeling good i'm feeling real real good at that point so what happened is why not bishop c3 well bishop c3 runs into f6 i'll show you that bishop c3 f6 now i can't do anything this knight is hanging by the way so I need to defend it, probably queen d2. And then, um, that's weird. It's a weird position, because you can't play g5. But this is not, I didn't want my knight to get all crazy like this. I didn't want this to happen. You sound like Naka, bro. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'll take that. These things go straight out of my head, how to improve. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot to improving. So I'll play queen f3. Queen f3, just principally good. I was like, if I mess this up, I can at least get my knight to g4. I looked away for a second, and you got haiku arrows on the screen. <laughs> Not good arrows. That's how we think, though, honestly. And I love using the arrows. So bishop here, rook f1. This is exactly the best move. Like I said, he played the best moves. Because I knew queen g7 was going to be the best way to dodge everything, because he can play f6. And then I was like, well, maybe if he gets his bishop to this diagonal, he's going to take me away from it. And he did exactly that. And I think this man is strong. He's very, very strong. So he put the bishop here on the best diagonal, taking it away from me. But I was like, well, then I'm going to play rook f1. And at this point, I'm like, well, I have to play into this. I have to play this way because he's playing the best moves. So knight, I played actually played knight e2 first, which is kind of reverse in a way. But knight e2, I want, of course, you know, just to show everyone, bishop takes, rook takes. And then that's just gg because he can't take it because bishop c3 check, just in case you were wondering. So thanks so much for the follow. Appreciate that follow. Weatherman Petro. Petro. So, um, and also, if I get this bishop, this diagonal is mine forever. You might as well just chalk the game up. Like, you can't give this bishop up. You just can't at no cost. So, he played bishop e5. I knew that was going to be played. And then I can swing the rook over and play knight g4. All that stuff can happen. So, easily. Would it be interesting to see a match between you and Simon Williams? Probably you will outplay him in this style. I mean, you know, Simon Williams is my guy, bro. Simon Williams is my guy. I am up two games. I am up two games. We played two games. That was it. But not saying that he, you know, Simon Williams is, I have to play. Like, I can't even talk, probably. It's just in the zone because you have to. You have to because of who he is. Bishop e5, Rick f1. I play Rick f1. And then now I'm hitting f7. Now I'm hitting f7. Dude, this guy has an amazing personality. Thanks, Parsley. Let's go. So I'm hitting this on f7. Only move, really, is like f6. F6 to defend this. So after that, he plays F6. Not as bishop kind of looks silly, but at the same time, it's very strong and dominating. But the rest of his pieces aren't. At this point, I knew I can't let this bishop be too active. I'm also going to make a threat with knight g4. 
because I got bishop h6 in the future too as well because I'm taking with check just in case he tries to take this and remove the defender and take my bishop on h6. It wouldn't happen. Bishop h6, I can hit the queen with check and then he's in trouble. So I'm also hitting this, but he has to make a decision. Do I take this or do I not? I've also broken up this chain of the queen and bishop of how strong it was before. So um, I'm feeling good. He takes it, of course. Queen takes g4 and I'm like, Based off this position, I feel better. My pieces are more active, and maybe I can slow grind this into a win. Queen takes g4. He plays rook a to e8. I thought this was a very good move. He didn't take the pawn on b2. He really didn't do anything, and he just bettered a piece. And I was like, that's a good move. And if, if I allow him to get, like, f5 in after everything gets all consolidated, tight, ready to go, chemistry is very nice between the pieces, he get f5 in, I'm going to be in trouble. I'm going to be in trouble. In some cases, because he can break this up. And then, you know, he'll have a great game if you mess around. Where are you in the world right now? It's sunny right now. Where are you at? Uh, is it sunny? Oh, no, it's dark, man. It's dark. It's, uh, I'm in Michigan. I'm in Michigan. Any chess books you recommend? Yes, Miss Miss Mods. Here's another one for the for the books here, guys. Guys, here you go. C3 Sicilian. It's right here under the video, actually. This is my favorite book to use of anything Sicilian against the Sicilian. That's what I recommend. But I got more recommendations under the video. So go check those out. What's up, Ryan? Can his queen capture h6? Uh, no, actually. Queen can't because knight take, knights will be able to take h6. $80 book, though. <laughs> hey, hey, man. I, it's worth it, to say the least. Miss Mod says thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. So I'll play the rook to c1. I'll play rook c1 just to put a rook on the file. Why not? I also have rook to c6 kind of thing. And he takes it. He takes on b2. So bishop takes b2, and then I play rook b1. So remember, I told you, I was like, you know what? I just want to move this rook over, and I always have rook b1 so I can take on b6. Sometimes the little ideas that you thought four moves ago will happen, or you'll be able to still remember them and use them, because that's exactly what happened here. Ryath with the sub bomb coming in like a big fella would, because a big fella should appreciate you, man. Thank you for the five subs gifted and luminescent as well. Let's put some emotes in the air. Get hype in the chat. Appreciate the love, bro. Put some weed in here is in the air. That's what's up. That's awesome. Five gifted subs, guys. Lightsabers everywhere. That's what's up. So I'll play Rick B1 in this position. Rick B1. Get hype in the chat, by the way, while we do this. Rick B1 and B6 is now hanging. Luminescent. That's right. Turn up. We in here. So Rick B1, he plays F5. F5. Six gifted subs is an even number. <laughs> Even number. Hey, your friends. What's up? I live in Grand Rapids. Nice. That's what's up. I actually used to play in Grand Rapids uh, back in F5 is nice. It is nice, John Davis. But this is the move that lost right here. This is the move. White to move. And this is where he started to go into the think tank. I, I, and literally, I mean, honestly, I, I like to play. I play a lot with my emotion in a way is in like my movements. So as soon as I play, as soon as he played F5, I made my move and I got up and I walked away. And I walked around, and I thought about it in my head, you know, the knocker, look in the air stuff, look around, stare at the wall like the board is in the wall moves. And F5 is the move he played, and this is where it ends. This is where it ends. Luminescent gifting another sub. Let's go. We in here. But that's not the idea. Not yet. Rook takes B2. Bishop C3. E takes F5. Queen H3 from chess comment. Rook takes B2. No, it doesn't work. Doesn't work. Queen H4, Rook takes B2. This is, and, and let's go back one move too, and you guys can keep guessing, but this is this is what happened, right? Like, at this point, I was like, he's either going to move the bishop, and I'm going to take this, and then come around the back way and just feel good, or he's going to play F5 for the aggressive kind of hit the knight, all this stuff. is ha He defending this, and he went for it. He went for it. And the move on the board is, and the move on the board is... It got so quiet around the world just now. It got so quiet. Queen h3, that is correct. Queen h3 is the move on the board. Queen h3 is the move. And I got up and I walked away. Because I knew at this point, I have him. I have him. Queen h3. With precision at the end and just being correct. Don't blunder anything because it ain't over yet. But you are getting some material. I'll play queen h3. Double threat here. Rook takes b2 and bishop h6 at the same time. So if he moves the bishop, 
I'm going to just get this exchange. I go up in exchange. I'm feeling real good. And if not, which he didn't go for this line, he went for the other line, which is tactical, very tactical. He took here on F5. So at the end of the day, he does have a pass pawn he can push through here. Hello, what's going on, Metal Eagle? What's up, bro? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. So he plays here. Pawn takes. Okay, so I took first with check. He took back with the queen. He could have took with the rook too. Either way, kind of the same. He took with the queen. He took with the queen. I play rook takes b2. Now rook takes b2. Yep. Now I'm up a piece. At this point, the Jedi is up a full piece. Now I am like, uh oh, here we go. I'm in the driver's seat. I got to close this out. This is a big win. This is three in a row. After losing the first round, having a draw, losing the third round, half out of three, and then I win three in a row. And this is the third one. If you take his his black bishop, why can't he take back with the queen? He can for all the fans here. Takes even this way wouldn't have worked. Queen takes bishop check. Ouch. Oh my goodness. Big fella. Whoa. Jumped off the deep end. Send a stretcher. That's not a move. It's over. You can just pack it up. You can start a new one. Knight g1 is the block here, guys. Knight g1 is the block. He's like, what am I missing? Queen f1, bro. <laughs> Knight g1. That's what you missed. Knight g1. All right. Queen takes f1. Rook takes b2. Queen f1. Oh, he took on d5 first, actually. He took on d5 first. He could have played queen f1. More or less, it's the same thing. I. So poison pawn. Wait, that doesn't work? Yeah, knight g1. I just defend it. I just defend the square. And I'm up a piece. Poison knight. <laughs> Knight takes d5. I played bishop e3. I thought a long time. I thought a very long time on this. Because I was like, what do I do comfortably? You want to be comfortable. It's not about what's, oh, that looks cool. Oh, bishop h6. I got like bishop h6. I mean, I got, you know, maybe, oh, let's try queen b3. Uh, let's let's do rook b5. Like, I'm trying to, you know what, what's solid right now? Because my, my king is not the best. You know, I have to block with a knight. He does have a pass pawn, and there is extra pieces, and he got two pawns in the center. Yeah, his king's shaky too, but I need to be careful at the end of the day. So I play bishop e3, so it puts extra eye on knight g1. My queen defends it, and I can get a check in too, which could be very, very dangerous. So I was feeling pretty good about that move. So I play bishop to e3. And, the, the you know, the rule is when you up pieces, you need to trade. So I was highly into knight takes e3. I was like, please trade. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he says, about what about knight takes e3? That's exactly what I wanted. Because the more pieces that come off, the more pieces I have. Because he's down a piece. That is a rule you should follow. If he plays queen takes c3, uh, if he takes rook f1 mate, no, right here. No, rook f1 is the same thing. Knight g1. No matter what gets the f1, I can get the g1. And that's what happened. Knight g1. Knight takes e3. Queen takes e3. Now I'm able to, this queen is an excellent blockader. As I'm blockading this, I can check. Because the king's open, if he steps to a light square, for instance, something as simple as d5 loses on the spot. Check, king here, and then I can take this with check. And my rook is going to get active. It still needs to be some precision so that you don't get queened on. But at the end of the day, you are doing very well still as white. So, you know, he didn't play d5. But um, if queen takes c3, then you have to play knight takes c3. Oh, defense mate. Go back to bishop fourth on the queen after queen takes b2. Okay, so let's go back. Hold on, right here. Right here. So, queen h3. Pawn takes. Rook takes f8. Check. What's next? Rook takes or queen takes? What if rook takes? Okay. Rook takes. Rook takes b2. There's no way out. Because I, you know, rook f1 check. Okay. Knight g1. Bishop c3 anyway. Because I still got the queen over here. The Jedi came out of nowhere with an extra piece. Where did it come from? I didn't even see it. Oh, my goodness. It's still there. It's a Jedi. It's a Jedi thing. Jedi thing. Bishop c3 check. Same thing. Same thing. Crazy. Crazy how that still works. It's just wild. I was like, wow, this works. This works. Can't take 
black rook instead of can't black take the rook instead of f1 instead of rook f1 nope nope because after and let's go to it rook takes f1 rook takes if he takes the rook if he takes the rook then it's check here automatic check if he takes i'm gonna take with check first because you got to take with check first or you get mated and then I'll play knight g1 when he does anything. Dope analysis. <laughs> Thanks, Tectonics, man. What's going on? If he took the rook first with the queen. What if he took the rook first with the queen? You mean back here? That's what he did. That's what he did. New bullet rating 1751. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, that's what I missed. Queen xc3. Yep. Queen xc3 check. Queen xc3 stuff, bro. This does not work. It looks so crazy, though. Thanks for the follow. Who's that? Who followed us? Grand Mark. Appreciate you. Yeah, if knight takes, well, of course. If knight takes, then you made it on f1. But you got to know to take with the queen. It's just obvious. It's a check. And then you can block knight g1. And, I mean, even I would take the knight after that, too, if that did happen. Because the check still was always blocked with knight g1. So, I knew that. So, he took with the queen. He takes with the queen. We take. This is what's going on here. Bishop e3. Chess Jacob. Thanks for the follow check knight g1 knight takes queen takes he played queen d3 i thought this was very sharp i was like oh i gotta be careful and i mean it was just in a sense that like i'm not afraid of him queening i'm just afraid of like him getting a draw or him able to be to be playing pretty good from here and i was like i'm not i don't want that like what's your opponent's rating he's 2370 um fide 2400 uscf how do you do tactics with tactics trainer or books um usually all of them all of them usually everything everything did you see all this move 10 moves ago i did not not into this though not to this my dude what's up what's up cry well queen d3 is sharp i was like well i gotta be careful so i went into the think tank again i started calculating started calculating 23 7 and getting busted like this no he ain't busted you know but he's super strong though and i am a jedi take it good i guess it's great it's great why not just trade queens there and attack the pawn from d2? Because it gives his chances of drawing or even winning if you're not careful or getting a piece back much easier. Much easier. I even tell a lot of students this all the time. Keep the queens on. The game go much faster with the queens on. You take, you, you take them off, you're going to have a long game. You're going to have a long game most times. What's considered a good move? Because good moves can mean different moves to everyone. Consider a good move. It depends on, I guess, a good move of the position. What is going on? Based off the position, what decision did you make to improve it or to win the game? Because the object of the game is to checkmate. So how did this how did this help? I played nothing to be games. I need to resign today. I think I should just stop playing. That's okay. You're gonna be fine. I did see that. Queen takes b6 looks good here. That's what I played. I played queen takes b6 because I was like, I can still hold this pawn. And that's what he went for. He went for it. E3. So how do you hold it? How do you hold it? You are sitting here and you're like, okay, you know what? At the end of the day, I can always just put the rook back. I can always just do that, but that's going to be passive, and I'm not a fan of that. Hello, sir. What's up, Vince Silden in the building? What's up, bro? So what do you do here now? Because you got to be careful because these pass pawns could get dangerous. What do you say? The pass pawns could get dangerous if the queens are on. Yeah, these pawns could get very dangerous, so I need to be careful right now. Queen b3? Queen b3 is, is out. No, queen b3 is like, why would you play queen b3? You know, I, I should have traded last move if that was the case. I, I took b6, so I wanted to keep the queens on. Keep them on as, as long as you can. Get the rook to the seventh ring. Says pawn chess set. He said attack the rook. Queen c6. That is the tempo. That's nice. Rookie two is the only way to stop it. It says d pack. Queen takes a6 or a5, I mean, he means. Rook e2. Use the weakness of the king, I guess. This is what I did, guys. Here it goes. Queen c7. Using the weakness of the king. You guys were correct. Getting the rook to the seventh rank. So I can mate him here. He only has one move here. He only has one move. And that's, he did make the right move. But he only has one move. Because I have uh, I have mate in two squares. I have mate on two squares. So if he pushes, I can go rook here. And I have mate in two squares. I have mate on g7 and h7. You can't defend both. You can't defend both. There's no possible way. There's no move on the board. You don't even have a check. You can play rookie seven if you want, but then I'll take the rook, and then it's the same thing as the last move. So it's nothing works. Nothing works here. So e2 doesn't work, so g5 is the only move because you can get the queen back, and that's what he played. He played g5. Queen b3 is awful. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine, though. It's fine. So 
g5 i put the rook here no queen d4 to defend uh, no queen d4 would never work queen d4 would never work because i'm hitting h7 too so this is a double mate the queen has to cover both squares so he has to move the queen back so he did he went queen g6 he went queen g6 so i'm like what do i do here i need to reset i need to reset or something i need to figure this out so what did i do because at queen g6 you gotta be careful it says 92 i thought about 92 i thought about it very nice technical play to finish the game right queen takes a5 queen takes a5 might run into e2 it might run into e2 and i might be in some trouble because i need to be a super accurate now because the rook's on the back rank i don't have no real checks the queen covers both mating squares so this stuff don't even work no more there is there is no mate so i need to be careful rook b8 i wasn't a fan of that yet because he still got these past pawns and my knight is not attacking this so for me to win this i gotta move this knight like four times or play g3 which is hard to do and then walk the king up and win this wow he's gonna try to walk this up it probably ain't gonna happen it probably ain't gonna happen I wasn't into it. Noble Glabel is enjoying his stream. Thank you so much, Noble. What's up? What's up? Queen C3 check. That's correct, guys. That's what I played. I had to reset. So I played Queen C3. Then he played Queen D4. I mean, Queen King G8. And now what? What's the next move? How do I finish this now? Queen C4 check. Okay. Can you take on a5 and queen e1? Yeah, but do you really want to be doing that? Do you really want to be playing around with this man? I mean, you can, Quentin Tankley. You, you, can, you can get the same position. You can play around with him if you want to. Play around with the man. e2 is crazy strong. Correct. It's crazy strong. It's very, very scary. 92 now. That is correct. I played knight e2 now. Just to stop everything. His queen is very, like... Honestly, he's almost in a Zugzwang position because the queen cannot move based off the mates. The rook covers this nicely. And he really, he's, he's almost going to run out of moves and then maybe have to shuffle the king. Well, he can't even go king f8. So you got to find something to shuffle because the queen can't move. Queen can't move because of this mate. So he plays d5. He pushes. Now what do you play? How do you finish this off? We have queen takes a5. We have h3. h3 was also an option. a4 was an option, Tech Gambino. Queen takes a5, h3, queen d4 from just do it, please. Queen d4. That is correct, guys. Queen to d4. Queen takes a5 from nice blade. I play this because, again, everything is in Zook's wing. He can't, like, move anything. You can't go here. You can't defend it here. You can't defend it here because I'm covering You got to cover the mate. So really the only thing you can do is move the rook. But I'm going to take this one then. Everything wins to be honest. Yeah, in a way. In a way. Because he's kind of zooms away now as long as I stay here on, on this. And I'm, I'm able to take this with check now. After queen d4, he played h6. So I'll take with check. He goes queen e6. I play queen back to d4. Just to reset again. See what happens. Hit the mate. Thanks for the follow, Jerry. Thanks for the follow, bro. Rook e7. He played rook e7. And I was like, I could trade this. I could. But I'm like, well, he's still got this over here. So I checked him first. Because I am hitting this. So king anywhere would be kind of rough. King f7 could have been played. But he just went back. And then I took here. On a5, everything's covered. It looks scary because your back rank is extremely weak. But I always have knight g1. And his king is not, it's not safer than mine. I want him it's not safer than mine, obviously. So, you know, I was like, okay, I'll be okay taking his pawn. He played queen c6. Even if he did get a check, which I'm covering that square, I still have knight g1. I always have knight to g1. Why not rook a8 check? Um, rook a8? Oh, you mean rook b8? Back here? Rook b8, he just steps out of the way. He could do either or. Rook here or king f7. Or even it may, not king h7 probably, but king f7. And it was just not that good. This rook was holding down too much. I like having the seventh rank more than the eighth rank or the first rank. So check. I took here rook c7, queen e3. And then I played queen c3, hitting g7 for mate again. He played rook e7. And then finally, 
I was just like, you know what, bro? Give me this piece, man. I'm tired of this. So I just took it. And then I was like, I got a pass pawn. This should be simple. So I start pushing it. The pieces are way better than his. Defenders and attackers. Correct. So I just start pushing the pass pawn. Pass pawns must be pushed. He played queen here. I played a5. He checked me on a back wank. I played knight g1. Now it looks scary. Like, whoa. But you got to remember, he's his his king is just as invulnerable as mine. So if, if e2, if he plays e2, I'm going to be able to check him in a few moves and pick up this pawn. Or really after e2, I could play queen c4 check and pick up this pawn. I just know I had it to keep this pawn, so it's not drawish looking. Even though I have a piece, but it's two pawns versus two pawns, which I could probably grind it out with the white pieces, I'm sure. But um, you want to be sure, you know, to keep this pawn as well. Push him, baby. That's right. So, <laughs> yeah, sir. <laughs> so here I came up with a nice little sequence. Good night. Good channel. I will be back. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for the follow, too. I'll see you on the next one. So what I, I made a sequence of moves here, and what what does it start with here? Thanks for the follow, Stotch14. What would you play here as white? Nice little sequence of moves here to happen. Finally give yourself room. <laughs> Not yet, bro. Not yet. Not yet. Queen takes E3. Yeah, that could be a move, but I'm giving up the pawn. Anyone notice James was the biggest guy here there? <laughs> But you know how much how much I got on that too. It was like, man, what are you eating? Who are you eating? <laughs> Knight f3, h3, h4. You have queen e5, queen c8, mate. Take the pawn if you can check with check. Queen e1, queen c8, and a6 from Cold World. Queen c8, queen c8, the eighth. Cold World, you are correct. Queen c8 check, followed by a6. That's exactly what I did. And I played a6 to defend this. I know that when he pushes here, I'm going to have enough checks to come back. And take this with the queen and still defend this at the same time like a Jedi would. And that's what happened. E2, I checked him. So no matter how you, you go into this, I'm going to find a way to figure out how to check you while getting his. If King H8, I think I could just, I can't remember if it's push or if it's a check. I don't remember where. Maybe like ladder check him. Ladder check him until I'm able to get this kind of thing. King h8 wasn't played though. King g6 I think was simple because a queen check here. And then take on e2. And anything else on this file, anything on this file was queen f3 check and take here. Only one was like king h8, which I was like, that one's going to be tricky. Latter day checks. Yeah, that one's going to be tricky. He didn't play this one. Or king g8 going right back. But I think I was just going to ladder check him, you know, until that figured that out. So he played king f8, queen f3 check, and then he resigned here. But queen f3 check, no matter where he goes, queen takes on e2. Let's say king g7, queen takes e2. I finally get rid of this troubling pawn. I'm about to queen myself, and I'm also defending this pawn, threatening a queen trade while the knight can help as well. And the Jedi goes three in a row at this point. I'm hot. I'm walking off the chair like you can see the steam out of my head. Three in a row, three and a half. That catapulted me into bigger rating games and i'm like if i keep this up it's my i mean i'm getting a norm for reals you know for reals like i'm, I'm <laughs> let's go so at this point i'm three and a half out of six games when i started a half out of three good game very nice game thank you so much the next round i get paired with um chiron griffith very strong he's 2450 uscf 23 about the same 2350 2460 or higher for fide